This is Live for Love TV. Live for Love TV. Yes, I am. TV Live for Love TV. Live for Love TV. Welcome back here with us here at Live for Love TV. It's the 21st day of the fifth month of the 21st year of the 21st century. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today we're going to go over something that I went over before. I wanted to make it clear that when it comes to the current pandemic, the vaccination, whether you've had a vaccination or you haven't had a vaccination, that's your own personal con concern. I'm not interested in, in any human being that has had a vaccination. I'm not interested in any human being telling me where they have not had a vaccination. What I think is, as I said, disingenuous before, is for those who have had to try and frighten those who haven't had and for those who haven't had what they call anti-vaxxers to try and frighten those who are about to have, I think in both ways, using fear to win your argument takes us back a thousand years. And this is what all of the powers have done throughout the thousands of years that we've been on this planet, whether it's religion, uh, governments, politics, science now, they always seem to want to use fear. Never use love. It's not a love thy neighbor thing. It's always using fear to, to get you to believe what they want you to believe. So I really don't care what you're doing. It has no concern. Your body is your own personal temple, has nothing to do with anybody else. And when people start trying to force or telling you not to do something or to do something, you need to look at them with, you know, with a serious amount of suspicion as to whether they're even your friends. Right, so I go from there and we start talking about what we do actually know, what we're told and what we're not told. And what we were told in the middle of this lockdown and the pandemic was that the way out of it would be vaccinations. No problem with that. We pay good money to our governments. The governments pay good money to their scientists in order for these people to look into the best things for the population of the planet and their countries. We have no problem with that. Most of us are doing our nine to fives. We're doing our, 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 our livelihoods. We're living our life, bringing up our children. We don't have time for all that. We don't have time to go into microscopes and look through this and look through that and check this out. We, that's, not our, that's not what we do. So we entrust the, people, the powers that be to do this on our behalf. And we have to trust the powers that be. It's simple as that. And not, let's be honest, most people don't take their health very seriously and they don't go around searching out how their body works and how it doesn't work. So we go to our doctors, we go to our oncologists if we need one, we go to our scientists and we, we look into the literature. So there's no problem with that. That's what we pay for. And that's what we're supposed to get. The reason I'm saying these things is because we were told the way out, as I said, was the vaccination program. And there's no problem with that. I love that they've actually got an idea of a way out of a problem. The way out was we're gonna get a vaccination the best we can to the best level we can. They came out with a vaccination program. This is the government's and they told us that they have at least one vaccination and maybe some others, but some at different levels that was 95% effective. Now, what does that mean? We understand that meant 95% effective against the symptoms. And it was the symptoms and the severeness of the symptoms that were either getting people into hospitals always actually taking people out of the game altogether. So that's, a, that's good news. There's no way anybody can argue with that. If they found something that's 95% effective, that's excellent. So I'll go down the road and I'll get my vaccination. You know, that's, this, is in, this is a hypothetical, we're just speaking. Get my vaccination. Why would I care if I'm 95% protected whether anybody else on my street has it? It's of no interest to me whatsoever. I've got my, as good as, as good as 100%, it's not 100%, but it's almost their protection. So I'm going to be walking around doing my thing. But they've told us that everyone needs to get it. We need to get some kind of herd immunity so that the virus will kind of die a death 
you know, it will it won't will not be able to replicate in people, which is very interesting when they start talking about that. Why would the virus not replicate in me now? Because I'm 95% protected. Because if it's not going to replicate in me, then what are you saying? You're saying that now I'm not going to be able to really transmit it as easily to someone else because I'm almost fully protected. Well, that sounds good to me. Then if that's the case, we should all, everybody without any question should be thinking, let's go forward and let's do this thing. But there's a problem there. There's a real, real problem there because we're now told that those who of us who have the vaccine, have the vaccination, who are 95% protected, have less chance of transmitting the virus. We can still transmit it, but we have less chance of transmitting it. The question to me again is why have I got less chance of transmitting it? Is that because I've got 95% protection? Well, that's good. So what would, that, what would if they had come up with a vaccine that was 100% good at protection, 100%, then if 95% is that good, so I can hardly transmit it, then you'd assume 100% means I'm not transmitting it at all. But that can't be right, because half the reason we got into this problem with everyone needing to be vaccinated because the asymptomatic people who had absolutely no symptoms, not even the, the slightest symptom, were going around and giving it to people without even knowing it. So that does something that doesn't make sense there. That can't be right. It can't be the fact that the symptoms are not there. Therefore, um, I, I can't really, you know, give it to someone else very easily. Because once you get to the 100% level of symptoms, they're saying that you're still giving it to people. You're spreading it like wildfire. That doesn't make sense. So what they're telling us doesn't add up. Either I can, either asymptomatic people can give the virus just as much as they used to be able to give it, or anybody else can give it, or they can't. And if they can give it and they're 100% protected, how do they give it? What, what are they doing? Since they have not a single symptom, not a cough, you know, nothing that you could, nothing you could, no temperature, nothing. How would they give it to somebody else since they're asymptomatic? And remember, asymptomatic is something that came into our idea, our idea in 2020. We've been on this planet for thousands of years, never heard of an asymptomatic person. A person who has no symptoms that's going at that, basically you're saying someone who's not sick, but they're sick because they're able to give up the rest of our sickness, but they've got no symptoms whatsoever. So they're saying they're, they're asymptomatic. I mean, this asymptomatic is new. We never had asymptomatic people with the flu as we would have had to lock down the world a long, long time ago. And pandemics would have probably wiped us all out a long time ago. So asymptomatic was something new. And as I said, I'm not saying whether an asymptomatic person can give uh, the virus to someone or not, but the logic that they've given us for, some, for, for vaccinating the whole population doesn't make sense. Because if everybody or 95% people are vaccinated, 95% of the people and only 5% ain't vaccinated, then most of those 95% people cannot give the virus. Or if they can give the virus, it's almost impossible to get. It's so small that it's almost negligible. But they're not saying that. They were not saying it about asymptomatic people. In fact, it was the asymptomatic people that got us all into the problem that we're in now. That was the biggest problem. That for the first time, we had a major uh, disease going around that people could not tell they had it. So they couldn't just go and isolate. They couldn't just go in their house and sit down and re relax until it's gone. They were walking around, touching, talking, coughing. Well, sorry, not coughing because they've got no symptoms. But they were just talking to natural people. Whatever they were doing, touching someone, boom, you've got it. Boom, she's got it. Boom, he's got it. Something doesn't make sense. And we have to look into that. We don't have to look into, you know, people are going to look at this and say, look, therefore, what he's saying, it means that there's no problem. I'm not saying there's no problem. Certainly not saying there's no problem. And whatever people believe is the reason that this thing has come, come about the way the governments are doing it, I don't have a clue. I'm not in any room with any of these one percenters or the big boys that, I, that other people seem to be in when they're always telling me this is what they're doing to the world. I find it amazing that the amount of people that come up to me who may be driving a bus, they're in a shop or, you know, they're just on the road and they know exactly what's going on at the highest level of the world. I mean, it's amazing. 
with the billionaires and the one person. I mean, are they in the room with these people? I haven't got a clue what they're up to. No idea. I have to sit and wait and watch. I can have all the theories, all the you know ideas, but I have to sit and wait and watch to see what happens to the world just like anybody else. I have no idea. And most of us don't. That's why I say it's all fear, whether it's used by the 1%, or just the everyday massive 99%. They're always frightening to say, well, this is the reason why they're doing it. This is the reason what they want to do with the world. This is the reset. This is the, I mean, wh where did they get this from? Where does they get this from? Just because and, and just because a thousand people say something doesn't mean it's true. Did, did you go into the room with these so-called Illuminati, Bilderberg group, or whoever these people you claim are doing these things, and they told you exactly what they're up to? Because that's what I get from my feed and my, um, on uh, my social media, people telling me, and I find that disingenuous. I don't even listen to it. I just think to myself, no, this person, they need, they, you know, they need to, what are they saying, Najima? Can you go chew a Wrigley's, you know, car? It, they, they ain't really saying nothing to me. But what I do know is when it comes down to what, we, what I was saying today about the asymptomatic people, about the 95% effect, effectiveness against the virus, uh, the symptoms for the virus, there is a problem. The two don't compute. It can't be both ways. Either asymptomatic people are not transmitting the virus or they are. And if they are, the 95% protection is not of any, any use to anybody else except me. Because, okay, it may stop me from going hospital. Okay, it may stop me from being seriously ill, but I'm still spreading it like wildfire because that's what the asymptomatic people you claim were doing. So, it's either one or the other, or you can't keep changing the goalposts. I know that right now people are too fearful, too emotional, too worked up to be able to hear these kind of rational reality. But sooner or later, these things will come back up, maybe six months, a year, two years, when, it, when they go on to some other way to divide us, like they're doing right now with the vaccination argument. They're dividing us between who has it and who doesn't have it. And everybody's getting on one side or the other and getting angry with the other side. That's just the same old divide and, and uh, rule tactics we've had for thousands of years. So I don't get involved in that. I don't really care. All I'm saying is that if you say something, then it should at least be able to make sense. It must be logical. It has to be logical. And what they're saying about uh, the program and the asymptomatic people, whether we can or can't, doesn't make sense. It actually makes sense if you look at it from the perspective of, well, they're saying we're protected, but we can't take our masks off. They're saying we're protected, but we still need to social distance to a certain degree. They're saying we're protected, because that would make sense. That would make sense. It would make sense because it would, it, would, it would lead you to believe that, well, maybe we're not as protected as they tell us we are. Maybe that we're just not as protected as they tell us we are. And if that's the case, then, then it actually starts to make sense. But I'll leave you to think about that for another time. And we're certainly going to be, this subject's going to go up on and on and on and on. And I hope I don't have to revisit it again, to be honest with you. I'm not really interested in what's going on right now with this particular pandemic, because it's just one more fear on top of all the fears that have come before them. So Live for Love TV, see you back soon. <laughs>